the war against uh, COVID-19 is, is going into a different phase. Um, the NHS hasn't been overwhelmed. Um, they managed to save that. It's been successful. Um, and people have done what has been necessary to do in order to stop that happening. Now we're going into a completely different period. I think everybody agrees with this. London infections are right down and so on. Um, but this is now an insurgency. You know, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a sort of traditional um, fighting of, of, of a disease. It's going to pop up and so on in different areas. So with an insurgency, you can't take the big broad brush statements that um, NHS, England are, uh, NHS England are applying or Public Health England, um, CQC and so on. And you've actually got to nuance everything down to a local level. And the only way you can do this is by changing tactics. And instead of just saying everything's going to be done like this, you have to engage with the individuals who actually are on the ground and understand what the issues are. And the way you do that is not by telling and dictating to them exactly what they should do. You sit down and you say, these are the issues that we've got. What would you do? How, how can you resolve these things? How can you make that work? Because we know you've got issues. So how can you actually reconcile that? And so what we simply say is to do and sort out this next stage of COVID-19, the, the insurgency, you have to engage. You've got to start sitting down with individual providers. Um, and there's quite a lot of really good individual providers out there who've got good ideas. You've got to start being transparent, Public Health England, um, NHS data, CQC, and you've got to engage because we're not idiots. We're the guys on the front line, okay, who have to deal with these things. We have solutions. Share it with us and let us think about it and then be receptive to what we might come back and say. We won't necessarily agree with everything, but you have got to start this, this process of engaging and stop being autocratic in the way in which you're entitled to be under normal circumstances because you're regulated and, and uh, by government to actually do so. This is a new environment. You need to engage with everybody. Transparency, engage, actually throw it back to us. Let us come back. Now, I want to just show you the, 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 what led up to this conversation, which is a clip from our COBRA meeting this morning, where it all became very heated. And I'm probably being very rude to a number of, perhaps to some of you guys that are there. I know you're all trying to do your best, but your best in changed circumstances is not good enough. You have to change the way and methodology it is an insurgency. So I'm going to let the, let, the, let the clip tape over and just say we all want the same thing and we just want to engage. And our frustration is that you ain't engaging and you need to. Thank you. The minister was on last night. She was on a, uh, on a talk thing that was put on. Um, sorry, I've forgotten her name, the, the social care minister. You know, and she, she was actually challenged over this. And she said, oh, well, we can't talk to everybody. No, Minister, you're wrong. You need to talk to everybody. You need to find a way to engage. Because if you don't talk to lots and lots of people, you will not defeat this thing. It will, you know, it, it's so nuanced that you've got to engage with people. Throw it back at us. Say, what would you do? This is a scenario. What would you do? It's called transparency. You know, this is the issues. How would you as a provider, you're criticizing us. So what would you do in our case? You know, in, in our situation, that's what they need to do. It's very, fr I, I think this week's been quite frustrating. I think everyone's been feeling it, you know, generally just, you know, just around the SCE, I, I felt it, you know, I'm picking up. I think people are feeling a little bit, wow, this is the long haul now. This is the new normal. But yeah, you know, as you as you say, there is little hope when the tests are coming back, you know, you're having to wait 10 days and then it's a non-conclusive. It's those things that we thought were more in hand than they actually are. Um, it's that realization. Why doesn't the NHS tell us the data it's got? And then we could actually come up with suggestions. We're not stupid people. That's the point. Yeah, we have workable solutions for this. We have a whole team of people who would love to get their hands on it because that's what we're all about is problem solving in our organization. Share it with us. Yeah, let us give you some feedback. I mean, what, what do you guys think? Do you, don't you think that's the solution? Yep. Transparency, clear as day. You tell us the issues and we'll come up with a solution. That's it. That's, you know, like you say, it's how we've run this operation for how long? And it works. How many outstandings? 
simple. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the transparency is key because it's not it's not that we necessarily come up with the solutions collectively. That, you know, we, 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 rather than this blame game and this defensiveness of saying, oh, we've hit our hundred thousand tests. You know, we all know it's baloney, and it, everyone's just trying to they're trying to just protect themselves from from blame, and we've got to move on from the blame. Otherwise, you know, anyway, it is I, what it is. I think you've got to move on from the blame. But you know what? If they don't move on, then the blame is going to overwhelm them because they yeah. won't be seen to say, hey, look, you know, this is what the situation is. Let's be honest about it. Let's talk to people who are in the front line. Hang on a sec. We're the bloody generals, for God's sake. You, know, you guys are the general. You're having to lead this thing. Yeah. And, and you don't put a boffin up front with the troops who are actually having to do the day the day to day stuff. The boffin starts to inform you as to what the issues are, etc. And then the government should be engaging with the providers like us to actually say, well, this is what we're getting. What do you think? And then making a decision. And you're not, you know, and, and, and everything is at the end of the day is going to be nuanced around localization of dealing with this. It's an insurgency. That's how you deal with it. You deal with the tribal chiefs locally and you sit down and you work out how are we actually going to solve these problems. You know, it's all there. The methodology is there. I think. Hazel, what do you think? Unmute. <laughs> You're a nurse. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Because like Joe says, we might not have the right answer, but we will have an answer. And rather than starting with a blank piece of paper, it's much easier to start with a piece of paper that's got lots of suggestions on and you destroy the suggestions. But in destroying the suggestions, you come up with what the real solution is. Cool. Mel Brickles, what do you think? Unmute, unmute, unmute. Yeah. <laughs> Unmute. Well, I haven't got a medical background, so I'm not as, as clever as Hazel when it comes to things like that. But um, you're, yeah. pra you're practical. You're organising our staffing. What is the I'm practical thing? I'm very practical. Yeah, <laughs> that's that, that's the, that's the thing I I'm good at is planning everything for everybody. So yeah, focus on that. Okay. So you should be in government. Yeah. Sorry. So <laughs> Oh, I'd, lo I'd love to plan them lot. That, that would really help, I'm sure. <laughs> I'd be far better at it. <laughs> so, what, what do you think? Do you, if, if, if we had everything thrown at us, couldn't we find solutions? Absolutely. It's a one team approach and we work so well at it. So, absolutely. Okay, right. Who, who else? Lauren, come on. You're, you're on micro and everything. You know, what, unmute. What, what, what do you think? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think. They just need to obviously they can't get the answers themselves so i think they do need to come like you said to the front line and the people who actually deal with it on a daily basis and know the guys inside out yeah get the practical solutions rather than the wishful thinking i think yeah cool steve which one you oh me okay um I think a week ago they knew how to respond they did things very quickly i think they're lost now and that's my real concern, because up until 10 days ago, we said something, i.e. the population, and then they would react to it and do something. And they did it quickly. And I'm worried now why they're not doing that. Yeah, they could. But do you think we could make a difference if we knew what the issues were? Absolutely. But they should be saying, look, guys, we've got we have genuinely got a problem. And, and that we want your help. Yeah, and, and and you know we 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 you know this is practical totally. The other Steve, <laughs> second Steve, are you there? Steve D, he's not there. Oh, he's not there. Okay. Fool me. Okay, Mel, what do you think? Lawyer's view. Oh dear. Well, I think that they need to uh, <laughs> they need to be able to adopt our no blame culture in order to be open, in order to maintain some integrity and for there to be an element of truth around the issues that are being faced. Um, trying to face them alone won't necessarily give them the right answer because they won't understand the issues. So, yes, I think they need to engage and they need to engage with providers like us who are able to be pragmatic, who are able to problem solve and who are able to look at issues and solutions with them. We may not agree at the end of the day, but I think by sharing, we can come to a better solution for the LD sector as a whole. Okay. 
Orlando, from a, from an FD's point of view. I didn't think you were going to ask me, but um, I guess from an accountant's point of view, I guess it's just really important to um, to share the problems with a wider audience. And with any problem, if you if you involve more people, you you get to understand what the real issues are um, and, and get to just get to the bottom of the problems. Because I, I suppose we will understand uh, the issues best, or not just us, but other providers. So the more people you involve, the the better solution you can get to. Cool. Okay. Um, Claire, Stevens, what do you think? You speak to the parents all the time. You speak to families. I do, and I I think I what think from home care does is proactively look at what problems are, and as you say we come up with solutions as a team. We take everybody's expertise um, and the information that we've got, the data we've got to hand from actually dealing with situations day to day and we come up with solutions we put them into place and we do it quickly I've been amazed at how quickly we've reacted um, and planned things um, throughout this whole situation and I think that's what we do as a company and, and want to do for everybody's benefit yeah no cool who else hasn't talked come on someone else just tell us give me a view who hasn't talked oh um, Luke, Luke Luke yeah hello yeah. Um, yes come on what's the big I, I, I you? think Problem. The reason why we're so good at, you know, supporting any crisis scenario is the information that we have at hand and the data. You know, we use data to inform our decision making. So, if we had more data available and people actually took on board feedback, um, it'd be very, very useful. So, for example, if we discussed what was working well and what wasn't working well, that feedback and that information to be taken on board to inform the approaches. But at the moment, it seems to be that there's been a blanket approach. There's no feedback being given back that's being listened to or actioned on, so the approach is just remaining the same regardless of whether it's working or not, which is quite disappointing, I suppose. Yeah, and I think it's everything's everything's a talking shop, and I mean, you know, the Care England guys are so engaged with so many different meetings and everything, um, particularly Anne McKay, and I felt really sorry for her the other day because I think she felt I was being critical of her when I was expressing my frustration at Public Health England, etc. You know, and, and the lack of response. I mean, those guys are doing a fantastic job, but you know, I just take, you can just see nobody's listening to them. Cool. Who who else would like to just any, anyone else who hasn't spoken? Come on, your views are important. Can I? Can I just mention CQC yes. as the industry body who have just tweeted understanding the impact of coronavirus on autistic people and people with a learning disability. So they've just tweeted their link they, to the, the same thing that went up yesterday, which says yeah. they're in the process of looking at the data. Yeah, yeah, they sent it out as a release to managers yesterday and they've just yeah. tweeted it. Brilliant. Thanks for that. Yeah, that, this, is, this, is a, this feels like a massive gap in the sort of ground, the data that's coming up from the ground level and getting where it needs to be. It's the industry body, it's not there. That's that good. guidance as well is quite patronising because if you read it, it's been there, it's been available for quite a while, but the guidance includes things like people with a learning disability might not understand what's going on. Maybe you should explain this in a simple way. Try using words or pictures or video. You don't say. It's pathetic. <laughs> CQC, your response throughout this, other than your man, other than the guys on the ground who've been great, they've been really helpful, but you guys sitting in your ivory tower, all of you, your response is pathetic, absolutely pathetic. You're a regulator, you need to give guidance, you need to lead on all of this. It's really pathetic and it's inexcusable, you know? And, and I, you know, I sent a tweet out yesterday and what I should have added is, who regulates the regulator? Because what, what's your purpose? Telling us the number of dead bodies, but not being able to actually understand any data or anything linked to all of that. You know, what, what help is that? You know, that's just depressing. We need to have insight. We need to have support as, as the sector where we've got all these ridiculous things that are being told to us to do, um, you know, without any consideration. No nuancing, nothing. And that's, that's what LD supporting people with autism and learning disabilities is all about. It's all about nuancing. It's all about person-centered care, you know? And the regulator has got nothing to offer in this situation. You know, surely pick up the phone, engage with us. We've been asking you to engage with us for four years because we run a data-driven system. You haven't engaged in four years. Well, why don't you engage now?